to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I have your WWE Crown Jewel full show review and results for you guys. You guys should know how these videos work. If you've never been here before, we're pretty much going to run through the entire Crown Jewel card, breaking down everything that happened, letting you guys know my own thoughts and opinions on everything that took place. See where we may go from here. You know, just comment on the matchups and let you guys know what my personal thoughts were on every single matchup, the show overall, and everything in general, man. So with that being said, let's dive into Crown Jewel and see if it will be better or worse than previous Crown Jewels. I feel like most of them are garbage, but uh, this card's pretty stacked, man. Let's see how it goes. Let's dive into it. Now, starting things off with the pre-show, guys, we did have the Hurt Business and the Usos going two-on-two. -two. I hate I missed this matchup. This is one of the matchups that I missed. These guys did go about 10 minutes. I did see some highlights on social media, you know, Twitter, things like that, and it seemed to be a pretty fun athletic matchup. Now, I don't know. I didn't get to witness it, but I will say seeing the outcome of this matchup with the Usos defeating the Hurt Business, I kind of don't like that just because, you know, the Hurt Business, they just reformed not too long ago. I'd like to see them get some big wins, and they haven't done that, and it's just kind kind of hurting them I think I think that it would have been nice to see them get this victory here just a little upset win but uh you know it's non-title it's it's nothing like too a massive so I don't see why they couldn't have gotten the win here but I understand trying to keep the bloodline to their full strength I, I guess I could see that but it would have been cool to see the Hurt Business get a win but I did not get to witness this matchup full and you know all of its entirety next up guys we have the Hell in a Cell matchup finally a matchup that actually calls for a Hell in a Cell matchup at the end of a blood feud at the end of a feud that really calls for it. So beautiful, man. Maybe they'll get rid of the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. You wish, Brad. You wish they were going to do that. They're definitely not just going to get rid of the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, as, as, as nice as that would be. And, you know, just getting away from Hell in a Cell is just for the sake of Hell in a Cell. I'd really like to see it bring, you know, brought back in a light that matters and not just once a year, because, just you know, just for issues and gigs. But this matchup was incredible. Just simply an amazing matchup. I, I loved this match. Start to finish. It was incredible. Really good stuff going on here, man. Just the epitome of great wrestling and great storytelling throughout this Hell in a Cell matchup. We had some brutal bumps. I mean, you had chains, you had chairs, you had the pipe, you had a, a, the, one of my favorite spots, probably my favorite spot of the entire night, or the entire show rather, at least this matchup for sure, had to be when Seth Rollins was on the top turnbuckle, or the top rope, and Edge shoved him off into the cell wall, so he like shoves him off the, off the ropes really Really hard. He bounces off the cell wall and ricochets off and then falls violently through a table set up on the outside. Very brutal looking. It was awesome. Great matchup through and through. I mean, when you have two of the best workers in the world head to head in this great feud that we've seen back and forth. Very good stuff, man. Just overall great. If you guys missed this matchup, it's definitely worth the watch, but Edge actually gets the win over Seth Rollins. So Edge gets the victory. He had, he had victory pyro going off. It was a great match, man. Just super fun stuff going back and forth. I think you guys would love this matchup if you give it a chance here. So definitely go back and watch this. If you don't watch any other match on the show, man, this is the one to watch at least so far in my review. But Edge gets the win over Rollins. I'm excited to see where both these men go from here. Next up, guys, we have Mustafa Ali taking on Mansoor and I thought that he was pretty good. I thought both of these guys looked great in this matchup. Again, went about 10 minutes or so. Very fun matchup. Good athleticism. Good story between the two. Just battling back and forth. And just a really fun, like if you guys enjoy Mustafa Ali or Mansoor Sword. This is just a really solid little football game right here that took place on the show. So, one thing I will say, though, is I hate how they just give Mansoor the rubs on these different Saudi shows. Like, man, this dude is not bad in the ring, man. Like, I think that he could work in, like, a singles division somewhere. I don't know if, uh, you know, I'm not, like, the biggest fan of the guy. I do love Mustafa Ali. I'm not the biggest fan of Mansoor, but he has gotten certainly better, and I think he could fit in one of these singles divisions if they gave him the chance, you know? But Mansoor does defeat Mustafa Ali. After the matchup, they had this guy that I think is, I don't know his name, I don't want to, I, I think it's Tareg or Tarij. He came out and he like kicked Ali in the head to lay him out just, you know, just to get the big pop from the crowd. Pretty cool moment, you know, I don't know anything about the guy or anything like that, but it seemed like the crowd enjoyed it, so that's pretty cool there. But Ali is defeated by Mansoor and he gets double smacked after the matchup. Next up, guys, was RK Bro taking on AJ Styles and Omos. And this was another matchup that wasn't that bad. You know, this was for the Raw Tag Team Championship. Where are the, where are the chat? What the, what the, what are you doing, Terry? 
All right, that's better. Anyways, this matchup was for the Raw Tag Team Championships, man, and it wasn't bad, you know, not the not the greatest matchup of all time, but it seemed like all these guys were engaged here. It wasn't, like, lifeless or anything like that. I had fun with the matchup, but I like RK Bro a lot. I like AJ Styles. Omos, you know, he's, yeah. Nonetheless, man, you know, I enjoyed it, but at the end of the day, man, RK Bro do get the win here. They retain the championships. I like this direction here. I like the call. It was definitely the right decision, and that's about all I can say about it, man. Right decision. Oh, yeah, and Matt Riddle had a sick-ass entrance on a camel, which was pretty nice to see, so I, I can agree with that all the way. RK Bro for the win. Next up, guys, we have Bobby Lashley taking on Goldberg in this matchup. Not a matchup that I necessarily wanted to see, but you know what? It's kind of intriguing. You got two big jack men going at it right here, and you know, it can be good. We've seen it in the past. It can be a good matchup, but I felt like this one was a little bit too slow. It was a no-holds-barred match, and it was just a little bit too slow. You know, they had some moments here and there, and, and Goldberg looks great. Like, physically looks great. I just think his cardio is not very good, so he struggles time to time in this matchup. He had a pretty yeah, a decent looking jackhammer in this one. We got a spear through the barricade. We got a spear off the stage from Goldberg through a couple tables to Bobby Lashley ending the matchup, which was pretty fun. Her business got into it. You know, Shelton and Cedric Alexander came out there. They were looking alright, but they got taken out. Again, adding to what I said in the opening matchup about how weak they look. Again, it, it, it just keeps on ringing true. It's like they got back together, but for what? They haven't done any Thing of significance, and it kind of hurts the group as a whole, you know, to, to see that happen yet again. But Goldberg gets the win. We kind of knew that was going to happen. I thought it would be great for Lashley to get the win here, but, uh, you know, Goldberg's got to go over. It's just the way it is in these things, especially when you have these special pay-per-views overseas and stuff. So, Goldberg gets the win over Bobby Lashley, but uh, it, it could have been better, I think, if they would have picked the pace up, but I think that was, you know, they were kind of limited due to Goldberg and his cardio and things of that nature, but not a bad match. Just wish it would have picked up a little bit. Next up, guys, was the King of the Ring Finals. My man Finn Balor taking on Xavier Woods. Now coming into this thing, I felt that, like, I would understand both ways, right? I'd understand it going either way, whether to Finn, whether to Xavier here. But this was a very good match. Very entertaining, very fun matchup. I will say the ending was kind of anticlimactic, but the, the match was fun. It was a good match. I mean, what do you expect? I know Woods is a good worker. Finn is obviously one of the best in the world in my opinion, so I knew it would be a great match, and it was, man. They went back and forth, but Xavier gets the big win. New king of the ring and it was a you know it was a cool moment for sure to see Xavier Woods get you know to get a, a bone tossed his way after his very successful tag team career to have this victory in the singles division is very big for him however I will say man I was pretty disappointed just because I think that Finn Balor you know like he's done it all right he's floated a little bit of everywhere and they they, they didn't want him as universal champion they haven't really done anything in the mid card he's been it they didn't want him in NXT they don't want him as king of the ring so it's kind of like where does he go from here, you know? I don't really, I don't know where he goes. I know he got drafted over to Raw, so I guess we'll have to see about that, but I don't know, man. I just feel like he probably fits better in AEW at this point. I know they can't sign everybody, but he would literally fit in beautifully. He would have bangers every single week. He he would be beautiful over there, man. I, and, and plus, you have all the different storylines and structures with Omega and Cole and the Bucks and everything over there, so not saying he's gonna go to AEW, but it would be pretty cool to see if that were to be the case, but Finn Balor losing here in another, another feud that he loses or another moment where he loses here. He has a pretty good win percentage in his career in WWE, but I just, I don't know, with this being like Xavier Woods' first big win to come over Finn Balor right here, I don't know, man. And also, I, I also know that it, like Woods is probably going to get like a cringy style King gimmick now, and I get that. Like, yeah, Finn Balor probably would have been the next one on there, but it didn't have to be that way, and I just think that unless they have bigger plans for him, then uh, I hate that he lost here, but who knows? You know, you never really know with WWE and their booking and the consistency and the logic like the, how logical it is like Finn Balor took the the long reigning undisputed Roman Reigns to the very very limit and then he lost by a, an elbow drop here in this match so I don't know man I just a little bit bummed out there but Finn Balor losing here it uh it sucked but it is cool to see Woods win this to an extent and I am happy for him I am happy for Woods but I wish that uh, my boy could have got it done there but very fun matchup right here but Woods is the new king of the ring next up was the WWE championship match Big E taking on Drew McIntyre and this matchup was a lot of fun, man. Very physical, very hard-hitting. Great reversals in this matchup, man. If you guys missed this one, definitely go check it out. Honestly, to this point, man, Crown Jewel has been very enjoyable. Probably the best Crown Jewel they've ever done. Best event they've ever done in Saudi. I, I feel like I can already say that based on the matches we've gotten so far. Everything doesn't really feel forced. It feels pretty natural. It doesn't feel like it's rough. Maybe outside of the women's finals, which I forgot to touch on, actually. I meant to talk about it in the Finn Balor King of the Ring finals, but Dewdrop and Zelina Vega, they went for five minutes, and Zelina 
Zelina Vega won the tournament. They gave these women no time whatsoever, and I would have given it its own segment, but my son lost my Zelina Vega figure, and it's a whole deal. But Zelina Vega did win the women's or the, the Queen's Crown tournament or whatever it was called, and I don't know, man. They didn't do those women any justice in that tournament, and I feel bad for everybody who participated and everything like that, and I don't know. I, I don't know, man. I don't even know what to even mention about it, but this matchup right here was very, very good between Big E and Drew McIntyre. Physical, like I said, great reversals. Like, the ending of the matchup was sick. The Claymore for the near fall was insane with the crowd. I don't know, man. Definitely a very fun match, and the, the momentum continued here with the great matches. That being said, Big E did retain the WWE Championship. I don't think anybody saw anything different coming from this matchup, but it was a cool thing to see with Big E getting the big victory over Drew here, and it was a sick-ass reversal at the end to win it with the big ending. Next up, guys, was our Triple Threat Women's Championship match on the SmackDown side. Three of the best women in all of wrestling, I would say, right? You have Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, and Bianca Belair was looking forward to this quite a bit and this matchup entirely delivered. This matchup was fantastic uh, between the sequences and the back and forth. Very fun. Very, very fun. If you missed this one, you definitely need to go watch it, man. It was very great. I, I had a ton of fun with this one. I will say at certain points, kind of looked like it got a bit sloppy at certain points or it was like they were moving a bit slow or like they were trying to get into the next spot and it was kind of taking a minute. However, very fun and creative matchup. Just the differences between the three. I love of a great triple threat, man. Triple threats can be so fun when you have another element of another body in there. And this one slapped. Great matchup all through and through. You had some great spots. You had some great creativity throughout, like I mentioned before, man. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this for women's wrestling, man. This this was top-notch wrestling. This was great. This is exactly what you want out of the women's division. This is the, this is the quality that you want out of a women's division. So this was great stuff, man. At the end of the day, Becky Lynch steals the victory. Bianca Belair thought she was going to have an opportunity. Sasha Banks thought she was going to have an opportunity. And then Becky took her by surprise with the schoolboy or the little roll up there or the little, you, you get what I'm saying. Sensed it in one, two, three. Becky Lynch retains. You know, at one of these shows like this, it's going to be hard to see a championship change, you know. But it was still great. Really fun matchup. And yeah, Becky Lynch retains, man. Not much else to say here except uh, we'll see where we go. And for our main event, man, we had the Universal Championship. Roman Reigns defending against the Beast Incarnate. Where would Paul Paul Heyman's loyalty lie? How would it affect the matchup, Brad? This matchup was fun, man. Honestly, maybe their best matchup they've ever had between the entire, you know, rivalry and series we've had of Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. Thought it was really entertaining, very physical, back and forth, great stuff in this matchup, some great near falls. We had ref shenanigans in this thing, interference from the Usos. Roman Reigns decks Brock Lesnar in the face with the Universal Championship and retains, so he defeats Brock Lesnar, but it was not clean. He does not defeat Brock clean, and so I don't know if that means we're going to get a rematch. I'm sure we're going to get a rematch, so we'll see about that. I, I don't know how all that's going to play out, but Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar went the limit, man. It was a very fun match. I actually enjoyed watching it. All in all, I think the whole show was pretty enjoyable to watch. I mean, not a ton of stuff happened as far as, like, title changes and all these different things, but all in all, pretty enjoyable. Like, I, I thought the whole show was pretty enjoyable from a wrestling standpoint. You know, all the matches were solid. Maybe outside of the women's final for the, you know, the Queen's Crown, but outside of that, I mean, I think we had a pretty good show. Like, wrestling Wrestling-wise, it was a fun show. I think everybody should probably agree with that. I, I didn't feel like, uh, you know, that it was garbage. Like, I feel like usually when we watch a, a Crown Jewel pay-per-view, I feel like we kind of leave being like, what the hell did I just watch? But this matchup and this show was was very good, which is kind of crazy to even say, honestly. That's like, that's insane. But that pretty much wraps up my Crown Jewel review, man. Roman Reigns is still your Universal Champion. We'll see how Brock Lesnar comes back and all of these things. But enjoyable show overall. But that wraps up everything. Thing, man. I hope you guys did enjoy the review. Let me know what you thought of the whole show down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. And I will see you guys in the next video. Don't cross the line like us not having a uh, ponytail head sculpt for our Brock Lesnar's yet. I need a bearded ponytail head sculpt for my Brock Lesnar, damn it. You crossed the line. I've been